Welcome ladies and gentlemen out of our studios here in Munich Commodity TV and we have a new company here from, for you at the first time Simon Clark the CEO of M2 Cobalt and we want to talk about yeah, cobalt exploration in Uganda in Africa. Simon good morning welcome. Good morning Jochen <laughs> pleased to be here. Yeah great to have you here thanks for taking the time and stopping by in our studios here. No problem. Um, M2 Cobalt it's the first time that you are on Commodity TV so maybe you can shortly tell us where are you based what are you doing. Yes, we, um, we have 1,600 square kilometers in, uh, in Uganda, which mm -hmm. is in East Africa, right next to the Congo, which produces 70% of the world's cobalt supply. Mm -hmm. And so the company is about cobalt exploration, of course. Cobalt exploration, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So Uganda, before we dive into your project, uh, how did you come on Uganda? Was it like historically wise that you picked up the exploration license or how, how did it work? So uh, one of the key people in our company is a lady called Dr. Jennifer Hinton. Mm -hmm. She was put into Uganda by the World Bank 13 years ago, mm -hmm. saw how vastly underexplored it was, did a bunch of work with the World Bank, and when she finished her time with the World Bank, she stayed, and she locked up the best assets in country, mm -hmm. uh, very underexplored, and then we managed to acquire those assets in January of this year. Wow, fantastic. So Uganda itself as a state, I mean, Africa is Africa. We know that. Um, I had last week, I had a gold producer from Zimbabwe, for example, which is always also an environment which is not easy. How would you describe Uganda as a jurisdiction? So Uganda, <coughs> Uganda is a great jurisdiction for us. The mm -hmm. opportunity arises because historically Uganda had a troubled past. Mm -hmm. People think of Uganda, they think of civil wars and Idi Amin and people like that. The reality is it's been peaceful for 30 years. They had a historic mining business that actually produced a lot to the GDP of the country. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to get rid of this uh, view that people had about the past. And so mm -hmm. they brought the World Bank in 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. They did a bunch of work across the country, identified some key assets, mm -hmm. and really put Uganda back on the map as a mining jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. um, we were fortunate because Jennifer, Dr. Hinton, was part of that process. Mm -hmm. And as I say, she was able to secure the best assets for us. Fantastic. The best assets secured. Let's talk about your assets. Yes. What are the assets? I think the one is called Kilembe and the yep. other one is uh, Bud, Bud, Bujigali. Bud, Bujigali. Yeah, yes. exactly. So let's start with Kilembe. Sure. So Kilembe um, was a large producing copper mine back between in the mid-1950s to mm -hmm. mid-1970s. They produced the highest grades of copper on the planet at the time, and they weren't looking for cobalt, but it was a byproduct of the separation process, mm -hmm. and so they just stockpiled it. So what we did is we secured the land closest to the mine, to the north mm -hmm. and the south, and on trend. Mm -hmm. So we believe we're going to find similar grades of copper and cobalt that they did. Mm -hmm. So that's the first assets we have. The second... Sorry, but one sorry. question before you move on. Um, so who owns the mine itself when you said you secured the land around it? Sure, the, the, the mine itself is owned by the government. Oh, um, that's good. Yeah, okay. so, so they own it. Um, there is some interest in maybe restarting the mine. Mm -hmm. as so the you could help them? Absolutely, as first movers for cobalt in the country yeah. and as people... If you imagine back in the 50s to the 70s, there was no modern exploration mm -hmm. techniques mm -hmm. ever applied in the area. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing the latest geophysics, geochemistry, yeah. and bringing a lot of technology into the search for new deposits for cobalt. Super. And you are happy with what you found so far? I think you did some trenching and stuff already. Very happy. We, mm -hmm. um, we actually used some specialist geochemical and geophysical technologies. Mm -hmm. And we believe we found some very interesting deposits, which we're now going to look to drill. Ah, okay, so a new flow is coming up. Uh, like absolutely. Very good, very good. So your second deposit, Bujagali. Second what deposit, is that looking like? Sorry, yes. Yeah. Second deposit, Bujagali, mm -hmm. is about two and a half hours northwest of the capital, Kampala. Mm -hmm. So logistically and infrastructure-wise, mm -hmm. very close, no issues getting there. Um, this is an area that had uh, significant artisanal gold mining in the past, mm -hmm. but it's never had any formal historic mining, um, which is actually a huge opportunity because it's an area that was identified by the World Bank mm -hmm. as being highly prospective for copper and cobalt. Mm -hmm. And so you did already some work on that? 
We've done a lot of uh, geophysics. We've done a lot of geochemical. Uh -huh. We found co cobalt on the surface of up to 1.75 percent. Nice. And okay. copper 0.9 percent, yeah. and also nickel. So what a, it's highly a great values. Okay. <coughs> Very good values and. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, they're on the surface, which in the tropics, uh, there's a lot of leaching. Mm -hmm. So you would expect that what you find on the surface would be even greater grades at depth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And would you consider, let's say, the, um, uh, let's say, um, um, geotechnically wise, would you consider this as a complicated rock? Meaning, is it more easy to mine or hard to mine? Or do you think you, it could be mined with conventional methods? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it's complex geology which as an explorer is what you want. Mm -hmm. um, and we found, we found a big area in our licenses, which we think could be a regional play mm -hmm. like Katanga. So in oh. Katanga in the oh. DRC, uh -huh. which as you probably know is the main copper cobalt producing area in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. You know, they, they, they can bulk ton copper and cobalt. Mm -hmm. So we see no issues using regular mining techniques for okay. recovery. Fantastic. So next steps, let's call it for the next three to six months. Can you be a bit more precise? You said you want to drill, but yep. let's say how many meters you think to drill, how deep you want to go, what is cost of drilling? Sure, absolutely. So, you know, we're going to start with uh, some drilling at Kalembe. It's mm -hmm. a historic area where there's been mining. So we know a lot about what we're going to find. We've also had extremely good exploration results. Mm -hmm. And so we actually have identified where we're going to start drilling. Mm -hmm. We'll start that process in the next few weeks here. Um, and we will probably drill nine to 10 holes of roughly 250 uh, meters deep to mm -hmm. test what we have. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and after that, we will move the drill to the Bujagali area mm -hmm. and we'll test up um, the regional play that we have developing for the high grade co cobalt and copper that we're getting. Mm -hmm. And we will also then use the drill to test a nickel cobalt anomaly that we also have in the area. Mm -hmm, so probably as an initial drilling program of somewhere around 4,000 meters in total. Mm -hmm. um, drilling is relatively inexpensive in Uganda. I think our costs end to end on the drilling are 135 meters a ton. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, dollars 135 me yeah. uh, dollars a meter. Okay, and th that's already all in there, but it comes a little bit in addition, right? Yes, well, yeah. you, you have the cost of mobilizing and then demobilizing. Yeah. And, and we will also do advanced geophysics with the mm -hmm. drilling as well to oh, okay. really help us pinpoint the right places to okay. drill. So how much money you want to spend? And on the drill program, it'll be somewhere in the million to million and a half range mm -hmm. as a starting point. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, we'll then look to do a bigger drill program mm -hmm. um, and come out with resource numbers. Mm -hmm. And this leads automatically to the question to every explorer, how much is in the bank? <laughs> well, at the, end of, at the end of our second quarter, we had $4 million. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I say, the drill program will be about a million. Mm -hmm. um, over the last couple of months of exploration, we'll have probably taken our cash down to about three and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're in good shape. We're in good shape. That's important. Um, we raised... When we went out to raise money in January, we went out for five million. Mm -hmm. We ended up getting eight and a half million. So that's what's given us the extra capital here to, mm -hmm. to start the drill program. So, Fantastic. So yeah, we're in good shape. Great. Then thank you very much, Simon. We look forward to, to good drill results then. Thank you very much, Jochen. <laughs> we'll, keep, you. we'll keep you posted. I would love to. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Simon Clark, the CEO of N2 Cobalt, and you heard it, the drills are turning soon. The company is in quite good shape. They have approximately three and a half to four million dollars cash in the bank, so they can pay for the next three to four thousand meters easily. And it looks like Uganda is a really good mining jurisdiction, and they are doing quite well because they have, they have a very deep in-country expertise. So I would say check out the company. Thanks for watching us, and bye-bye from Munich. Bye-bye.